Good afternoon, people that like Dota 2. We have ourselves a Dota 2 match. We have ourselves a Dota 2 match between M5 and KP. This is game number two of a best out of three for the third place decider for the Lost World Tournament. Game number one was taken by KP. I don't really know what I can say about that game. I mean, it was a build up towards a big Luna versus three heroes that were not as big as Luna, but still pretty big. Which ended in a base race, of which I really thought that it was so even though, maybe, I mean, you even saw the computer like hesitating on moving towards one of the bases, but it was like a split second that it was uh, KP that was victorious in that match. And um, yeah, that is why they are up one, and we're going to see if uh, Moscow 5 can make it into um, a third game, because that is... Uh, that is what they are going to try to do. So, wow. Draft is being uh, started already. As you can see, we have a ban out for the Rubik, the Morphling, Darkseer. Actually, we have a Broodmother, which wasn't banned or picked in the previous game. As well as a Lushrak and a Lycan ban out for Moscow 5. And the first pick is the Lee Naga Siren. They're not hesitating about that. We still have the Invoker in the pool, which was played in the previous game as well. And we did we do see it played uh, pretty properly as well uh, in that uh, in that game, and uh, we're gonna see what they're gonna do with it. Are we gonna? See, I would really like to see some team fight. That's what I want to say because Tidehunter is one of those heroes that we see we see picked up quite early lately. Though in the previous game he was totally ignored, which was quite sad because I do like Tidehunter uh, because he can make nice plays with his Ravage and stuff like that, and it is. It is nice. So we do see Tyrone picked up here by KP. Let's see what the Moscow 5 is going to do against it. And just so that I can soothe people. I say Luna. Not a Luna. Not a Luna. I say Luna. Thank you for your attention. Let's get back to the game. Reserve time. The only reserve time for these heroes. Let's see, what, well, Entimage is still in if they want to go for those kind of carries, but they already have the Mega Siren, having said that, that's not good. TA is still in. We saw TA being banned in the previous game. They could pick up that one. Having said that, Venomites are still in the pool as well, so they still have to deal with the counter that gets picked up. There's still also all of the jungle heroes in as well. And we do saw, that, saw them liking the Chen in the previous game. Enchantress and then Enigma, of course, still in the pool as well. But uh, they're taking their time. Do they want to have a jungle hero? Do they want to already pick up a, a solo lane and just leave the supports and stuff for later? Or gamble that the TA is going to be uh, left in the pool afterwards? Disruptor and Enigma. Whoa. Okay. So they go for Wombo Combo styles. Because that is what you do if you pick up... Well, you have, of course, a Naga Siren, so you kind of want something that you can set up with, with your ultimate, or, with, you know, team fight wise That is why you have a Naga Siren. So what do you do? You pick up the Enigma. You pick up the Disruptor. So those two are both heroes that we can... Uh, all three, actually. We can expect some big plays from. We can expect good team fights and... Painful team fights for the Dire, I have to say. Well, we're going to see. We're going to see if uh, if they're going to be able to get it off. Because that's, of course, going to be the, the main issue. Of course, KP already said that they want a team fight. They already picked up the tight hunter, making sure that they had that one at least. Having said that, if the tight hunter is not in the, not in the sleep, not in the song, what you can do as a tight is just bam that ravage button and hopefully you'll be able to get it off and, you know, stop the black hole right, uh, well, right that second. A turn a team fight around. That is something they have to keep in keep in mind because that that uh, yesterday we saw a match also with the song of the siren, the uh, with the Naga siren I should say, bang. that the opponent team made very good use of that. That they could get their BKBs in that case, but uh, for Tide Hunters Ravage of before anything else really could happen. Of course, you can already precast the black hole. In which case, if you get the Tide Hunter, then that will be fine. But if you don't get the tight on doing that, then you're kind of doomed. 
Keep of the Lies being picked up here by KP as their third pick before we go into the next batting phase. So it's going to be hard to push against uh, that lineup if they uh, if they want to do that, to be fair. And of course, uh, we might see some combination with Keeper of the Light. I mean, he is uh, one of those heroes that could make for very strong laning partners if you want to have Aww. something like... Uh, yeah, of course, you know, the, the famous Keeper of the Light, Phantom Lancer lane. I'm not expecting that one, though. But there, there are a lot of heroes that could benefit very well from the Keeper of the Light. And he's, of course, able to keep a lane at bay. And we have seen Keeper of the Light being played by EG, by Demon, as a solo side lane. I'm not expecting that, but it would be fun to watch, I have to say. Queen of Pain gets mad out as well as the Lone Druid here, oh. as well as the Chen. I mean, en Enchantress is still in if they want to go for that jungle hero. Of course, Enigma is going to go in the jungle for N5. And no jungle hero for KP so far. In last game, they did have a jungle hero. They had the Nature's Prophet, which is still in the pool, by the way. So they could try to do that again. But I kind of think, I mean, they, they kind of miss their carry, as in for KP. Antimage is still in the pool, though. Could go for that. But then again, Antimage for Zanaga Siren is not really that strong. Because you won't be able to blink away. You won't be able to glimpse back if you are getting, if you are blinking away. It is, uh, it's, it's not as strong as, uh, as you would want it to be. Maybe a Chaos Knight would be better or something. Hmm, we'll see. They're taking their time for the last band, though. What don't they want them 5 to play? A Tinker. They don't want them to play a Tinker. Really? Tinker is, of course, also one of those uh, pushy heroes, and they want to be the only one that can do that with the Keeper of the Light. Counter push, that is. And uh, for people asking in the chat, uh, Meepo is not yet in the Captain's mode. He has not been uh, been added just yet, so we might see that only next week. And having said that, Meepo is probably not gonna picked up, be, gonna be picked up anytime soon. Can He's pretty hard to, uh, pretty easy to shut down. Maybe as a surprise last pick of some of the, of some of the teams. But if you have a small amount of burst, that is Meepo dead. Taking their time for the next pick. They have the Enigma in the jungle. Naga Siren could be together with the Disruptor. Dual lane. That leaves two solo lanes for them to sort. There's still plenty of options though. I mean they don't have the Tinker anymore nor the Queen of Pain. But Windrunner is still in of course. Bounty Hunter we've seen him a lot. And for mid heroes there, there's, a, there's a plenty. And they go for the Nature's Prophet themselves. I did mention him earlier for a possible jungle hero for KP. But we've seen him solo lane. Uh more than we've seen in jungle actually. So uh, he is going to be that solo lane for uh, a 4 and 5. Leaving only one solo lane left to be picked up for M5 afterwards. And leaving KP without a jungle hero unless they want to pick up the Enchantress, which they probably don't really want to do because like I said, that doesn't really fit into their lanes anymore. Well, depends on us what they want to do, the Keeper of the Light. Do they want to have him at a solo off lane? Or do they want to have Time. Do they want to have the time? maybe Titan to solo? We've seen Titan to solo a lot as well. They're taking their time though. Either they're going to go for a tri lane and need a hard carry and a solo lane, or they go still for a jungle hero. Look at the bonus times that is being used. Radiant time only has 7 seconds left. Dire time is now ticking in there as well. Juggernaut. They go for a juggernaut. Oh, wow. Early aggression. I have to say, I've been seeing Juggernaut a lot more lately, and I like it. Because he, he is a pretty entertaining hero. Uh, I think, yeah, uh, Juggernaut was uh, was played by uh, KP yesterday as well, in a match versus Empire, and I have to say, uh, well, I, I don't really want a spoiler, but you have to watch that match. KP versus Empire, game number two. Check out my YouTube for that. That is an amazing game to watch, and I will not spoil. But it is, uh, it is, it was played pretty darn well, and also for the Naga Siren. Templar Assassin. And it will be a TA that gets picked up last. Got banned out in the previous uh, game. I did mention her earlier, and she was still in, and is a good solo lane as well, so mid. Venomancer. And it will be a Venomancer that will be soloing it up against a TA.
No hesitation from KP. They want that. They don't want that TA to do anything there. So let's switch overlays again already, just so I don't forget. Only last thing. And I am, as you can hear, opening a drink. I'm thirsty. There. Thank you for your patience. Patience. Okay. So. Game number two. Best out of three. Waiting for Korkva to pick up his Juggernaut. Juggernaut. And then we can jump ourselves into the game. See who's playing what. Well, already, you can already see most of it right now, though. But I will still go over it because that's more fun than just seeing it right like this. Five seconds remaining. They're really taking their time to pick that one up. Well, pause. That's fine. But let's go over the Radiant side then first because they have already picked up all their heroes. And uh, M5 on the Radiant side, and 5 the team that has to take two games in order to still take this best set of three. Because they are now uh, one game down. And they, uh, they want to win this so that they can force out a game number three. And uh, on the Radiant side this time, we have got uh, Stalianer on the Templar Assassin. Nexus is going to be on the Naga Siren. Dread on the Disruptor this time. Sidoi on the Nature's Prophet. And Solo will be on the Enigma on the Radiant side. On the top le on the top side of the map. In the other corner. Oh, I could say it in boxing style, can can I? Yeah, now I lost lost my train of thought because I was thinking about how boxers always say. Like in the right hand corner on the blah blah. Because you have to see all the weights and stuff, and of course I don't really know that. Uh -huh. Sorry. Anyway, uh Juggernaut played by Quikfa. Uh, as expected, he is going to be taking that up. Pass, he's going to be playing the Tide Hunter. You see him here as Dota Zero. But he is actually Pass. Asuna, who is uh, the Asian letters, is actually uh, Asuna, like I said. is playing the Venomancer. He's going to be probably like Die on the Keeper of the Light. And this guy, I checked out his uh, scene profile, but I'm not sure who it is. But we did see him play a Invoker in the previous match. We saw him play Invoker yesterday. And he plays a good Invoker, and he is entertaining to watch. So... Uh, he is going to be playing that again. Slash, slash. We're going to call him slash, slash. Or just slash. Slashes. Hmm, not sure. We have a pause. And we are not sure why. But until the pause is over, we can't really go anywhere. We can't really do anything. Um, we'll probably see a, a trail lane going up between the Tide Hunter Juggernaut and the Keeper of the Light. So he'll be getting uh, quite some free form if the Keeper of the Light can manage to keep his uh, harassment to the heroes only, which is something that Keeper of the Light is a, is a hero that is very e easy to farm with. I mean, his Illuminate is just, uh, his Illuminate is pretty painful and clears out quick rays very fast. But one thing that, that can happen is you can hurt your your carry with it purely because you then, I guess he had, oh, hey, they swapped heroes. Asuna is now on the Tide Hunter. Venomancer is now being played by Pass, just so you are aware. Um, but yeah, the, but you can easily, with, a, with your Keeper of Light, sh shut down your own carry, which is something that you really have to watch out for. But you want to harass your opponents, you want to harass your, your enemies, but you don't really want to hit the Creep Wave with that. So we're going to see if he's actually going to do that, or if, he's, uh, or if they have a different plan. Maybe they just want to push out this tower very fast, which could be an option. As uh, we're gonna see them uh, seeing each other in the jungle, oh, hiding behind a tree. No, Blink is there, they know he's there. There goes the tree on, scouting them out even more. So they will be backing off. And uh, one thing, of course, for M5 in their favor is uh, this Enigma. Enigma is actually one of the faster farming heroes in the jungle, of, uh, of all the heroes in the jungle. So he's, be, he's gonna be able to pick up that extra gold there, extra experience there as well, as something that KP is not gonna be getting because they don't have a jungle hero. So that is an advantage for M5 for sure, and we will see them that back in the in the graphs as well. I would expect, depending of course how the lanes are actually gonna go, because like I said, this is an I think an aggressive, uh, kind of aggressive tri lane. Naga Siren will of course do what she can to still farm, but she is together with the disrupts and they can harass, but not as much as uh, the Keeper of the Light can. So I'm curious to see uh, who is gonna be getting the better of that lane. A mid lane it will indeed be in Venomancer solo taking up against uh, TA. 
And that is what we see more often. I mean, TA versus Venomancer. Venomancer is one of those heroes that can pop up a fraction so fast with all his poisons and his uh, ticks, all his poison stings and his gale. That is just uh, very annoying to deal with as a as a tem Templar assassin. The only thing that, well, the Venomancer then still has to do is make sure that that not only does, I mean, he has to shut down a TA. That's something that he has to do. He has to make sure that, I mean, he's still going to get last hits, but you have to make sure that he's not going to get that much last hits, and maybe even kill him off if you uh, find yourselves in, the, in that position. But we have seen Venomancers before who, who, they stay alive against the TA, but they're not really winning from the TA, and that is something that we need to see. That is the point I tried to make. They ha he has to win from TA, not keep it as even, has to harass him away constantly. And maybe that is why we saw the switch also in uh, in who is playing what, just so that because Pass may be more experienced in, uh, in do doing uh, doing that. Uh, Riptide being the first skill of Naga Cyber Inspect, being able to uh, to harass the, the Juggernaut a bit more. Thunderstrike, hitting up on the tide, we'll be fine. Wards are placed here by the Dire, so they are uh, blocking the creep spawns. Naga Siren taking a lot of harassment, that's that Illuminate, and this time an Illuminate indeed did, did not hit on the creeps, I believe. Something that, that is uh, good indeed to watch out for. We do have still Tangos and a Salve on the Naga Siren, she should be fine. And she's gonna use the Riptide actually to get those glasses, just because she doesn't want to get in uh, range too uh, too close. Enigma gonna place a ward there. Is just gonna go back into the jungle to continue to farm. To be fair. <laughs> On the top lane, in the meantime, we have an Evoker taking it up against an Aegis Prophet, but we see a Cold Snap harassing Seedoy a lot here. Uh, but last hit wise, it shouldn't really be all that different. It's a uh, 6 for 1 on the Invoker. Let's see, Nature's Prophet who is 8 for 5, so he is slightly ahead. Uh, we might see that change uh, the more levels that Invoker is getting, but uh, for now, nobody in theory should be really dying. And I think the same thing goes for this middle lane. Venomancer who is on 8 for 4 with uh, 9 for 7 on TA. Who uh, still uses the refraction and actually now picks up side lanes, uh, which is the thing that she has to do to just get that harassment into uh, the Venomancer who's trying to trying to purposely uh, get that refraction off. So maybe come in a bit more range than he normally would gush on the uh, Disruptor, but he'll be fine as well. And the creep's actually helping him out slightly. TA picking up an invisibility rune. But she has a bottle, so she will not use it just yet. And maybe using it for uh, escape or just a solid right click as well. And just one poison sting. Look at that refraction. It's already off again. It's just so annoying. Denied. Denied. Gale going off here. The harassment comes from a TA, though. I'm going to check. This might be turning into a kill, but that's where the invisibility room comes in handy. In the meantime, First Blood does go into the Evoker. Whoa, Evoker almost managed to kill off the TA, but the Trion's helping out there as well. And it is the Evoker that his tornado didn't work out. Probably used the Cold Snap as well, but it is not enough to take down a Templar, to take down a Nature's Prophet, sorry. <laughs> and B, not TA. TA way too much. So First Blood on this top lane, where in theory it shouldn't have happened. Especially not since Invoker is. An invoker that's going for for Quas Wax, so he could have gone invisible, but he thought he was going to get a kill, obviously, uh, and it didn't work out. He decided to man fight, and man fighting sometimes goes bad. And this case, it went bad for the invoker, giving that gold to the Nature Prophet who uh, got the advantage of the lane. One thing that we do have to know with that, though, invoker did get forced back and is away longer from the lane than the invoker is. Now TPing back. Purely for the fact that he was so low and he had to go back. The only good side is that he has a TP of his own, so didn't really have to run back. But anyway, favor of the lane goes to the Nature's Prophet. In the meantime, bottom lane is still the lane where, in theory, the action should happen. Look at that harassment! Look at these trans! This is the Quas Invoker also, though, as least he's specking his Quas up, so he has got the extra regen, extra survivability, but the harass is just so much. He has to really be careful not to feed his trials to the Invoker, though. I mean, that is a really risky business. Extra golden experience for Invoker if he gets that. In the meantime, Malefis and Ensnare tied onto Riptide, Nature's Prophet's ultimate, Naga Siren picking up the kill. That was a fast kill. With that Riptide and then the Nature's Prophet's ultimate, that 
was painful. Level 2 Tidehunter. Yeah. Enigma was level 4, Naga Siren level 4, and Disruptor level 3. Tidehunter being pretty sad with that. And he didn't even spec his uh, Crick and Shell to maybe do something there in return. In the meantime, though, that tier 1 tower on the top lane gets harassed. They just probably just making sure that he's constantly on the tail of this invoker here. So you're not giving him any rest, and right now, now the Tidehunter comes in to help. Now he makes sure that he, got, he can be there, maybe to force him back. Maybe not get a kill, but force him back. Because he won't be able to get a kill just yet. And that pool did work out. But it's only a one pool. Maybe they want to push. Unless he's also going to be uh, pulling this creepy camp. He is uh, going to be pushing the lane with that. And the Volker in the meantime, level 6. Where did the TA go? There she went. She is level 6 as well. Did not go down once in his middle lane. Got 22 for 14. Uh, with the Venomizer being 21 for 8. So they are even. So did not win the lane as I said that he would want to. But it's uh, it's just even. Keeping track on that. Let's check out the gold. And it is in favor of the Radiant. And this is the difference of the uh, Enigma. We see Enigma highest on last hits. And of course that is a bit different last hits than normal. Because it is last hits in a jungle. They give less gold overall. But still, it is gold that KP is not getting. It is experience that KP is not getting. And that is why we see them 2k, 1.5k in favor right now. 1.5k gold, 2k experience. And then that, of course, and the kills. That kind of helps. And the first blood. But they are in favor right now. M5 looking uh, looking good, at least for the laning phase. Gil going off, just forcing the TA back. There goes the refraction already. It's just It's just so annoying to deal with that. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I feel the frustration of this TA versus this Venomancer. It's just, it's just, uh, yeah, it's not very fun to fight against. Naga Siren, who's managed to get 23 last hits on this bottom lane, and and the kill, of course, has got herself some mana boots. She's up versus the Juggernaut, who is 36, 37 now for 10, so does have uh, a nice bunch of uh, last hits uh, for himself. And then there's level 2 Illuminate that goes through these creeps, still, still making it possible for the Juggernaut to get those uh, last hits pretty safely. Depending on how low they are, of course. Tier 1 Tower is still not dead yet, this Tidehunter making sure that this Nature's Prophet stays back. Tidehunter level 3 by now. And I'm uh, I'm looking forward to this po to that point in the game where the Naga Siren is level 6. Well, she is now, but you know, over level 6 where the uh, this guy is... Uh, if Enigma is helping out, is ready to leave the jungle. I'm still expecting maybe a go on this bottom lane here. And when the Disruptor is level 6 as well, and maybe the Tyrantra as well, to just even that out. Just to have that team fight come a little more. But I c because maybe they're just going to stand there thinking, you know what, we're going to push this lane, and we're going to force you to team fight us, and then there will be a team fight. That is what I hope for. It's probably not what's going to happen, but you know, one can hope. One can dream. I can dream. Enigma picking up a soul ring. Able to just continue his farm in a jungle continuously with a demonic conversion every single time. And not be out of mana when uh, he might be needed on the lane as well. So far though, not really needed. Juggernaut staying back. Uh, giving a bit more space to uh, this Naga Siren. Also, of course, because she does have the song, and at any given point you can use it. And if the, na if the Juggernaut is by himself, there will be not only a Naga Siren, but no also an Enigma. Also... A Disruptor and, of course, a Nature's Prophet and Snare on the Keeper of the Light. He will drop here for sure. Naga Siren picking up the kill. A wet work specialist. A wet work specialist, yep. And it is a Keeper of the Light. It's just a uh, wrong place, wrong time. And one is Snare and, and you're just dead. And Nature's Prophet didn't even TP in for that one. In the meantime, top lane though, middle lane has some issues with uh, TA having a lot of difference right now. Nature's Prophet. <sighs> They just the ultimate going through. Still, they're still alive, but still uh, taking a lot of damage. He, I'm gonna follow this. And Nature Prophet now TPing and landing a sprout on the Venomancer. He goes back in. Venomancer drops here. Naga Siren in the mix as well. In the meantime, I hear a Maleficent and a Black Hole going off. Catches the Keeper of the Light. Will be enough. Tide Hunter level 4 goes down to the TA. Still alive here. As Keeper of the Light drops here as well. And a Juggernaut. This will be a team wipe. A global team wipe because Invoker went down earlier on the top lane. After he killed off the Nature's Prophet, and that is a worthy buyback from a Nature's Prophet. 
He just got three kills after he bought back because he died on the top lane right when we started DA having a lot of trouble mid lane. And I have to say, <laughs> this is one we use for buyback. Tier 1 tower will drop as well. And uh, they will, well, team wipe 8 for 1. That just says it all. With the only kill done was just now on this Nature's Prophet who bought back and I got three kills in return. This might be the next kill though. Naga Siren going down. Invoker picking up the kill. Enigma in the mix tries to land a Malefic, does land a Malefic, you see Keep of the Light being dropped out, and Tidehunter, he just can't do anything! He can't do anything! TA double kill, Stalliner has a good game after a not that great start, as in, at least, uh, even, even start with a better man, so at least not a start that he was probably hoping for with no kills, but right now, picking, uh, picking it up, he didn't die yet though, so it's all good. Tornado will make sure that he can't follow up on the Invoker anymore, Tier 2 Tower will drop, and like I said, at some point, they will all five come together, maybe, hopefully, and say, team fight us, or your towers will die. Well, Tidehunter is level four, so he can't do that much. They can't stop this TP from happening. And that's two towers down. And I'm thinking if they do it again on a different lane, it will have the same results. And that is, uh... It's gonna be painful until this Tidehunter reaches level 6. But right now he's being shut down pretty successfully. He's died three times. Let's put up net worth because that says a bit more right now. And we see Radiant side heavily in favor. That's of course also because of the two towers that just went down. We see a big spike in the gold going towards the 5k with experience graph also of course spiking because of that team wipe. But uh... yeah. That was, uh, and, and, and Naga Siren came there for it. Everybody went to the middle lane to help with that fight, to turn it around, because it started off with the TA being in a lot of trouble, uh, looking to go down, but then the rest came, and they just managed to turn it around, and KP came there too late and just died. And I say came there too late, but there's also the difference in levels that kind of made them die, because they did have to deal with the kinetic field and the static storm and there was no ravage to deal with it maybe if they would have had a ravage it would have been a different story and that fight also in the mid lane templar assassin now has her blink dagger so she is now going to be on the time of her uh, of her game that she is not some that, someone that you really want to walk into when you're by yourself because you're going to die you can't run you can't stand still. You can't really do anything. You can't TP though. That's one thing that you can do against the TA. But then again, there will be a lot of burst damage. Venomancer lands his ultimate. Wanna try to kill on the TA? Hey, yeah, Keeper of the Light! Illuminate finishing it off. And it is a disruptor that's on his way back. Still getting slowed by the Gale. Might even still drop here, but I don't... Well, actually, no, he'll be fine. We did see Nexus moving uh, towards their thinking. Maybe he has to deny his teammate, but not needed anymore. In the meantime, though, the tier 1 tower drops on the bottom lane with Enigma and Nature's Prophet both pushing very hard with their idols, with their stumpies. And uh, making sure that this tier 2 tower will probably drop as well because the only one left to, to defend is the Keep of Light, which is, of course, a good hero to do that with. But it's not going to be enough, I think. Not in this case. In the meantime, mid lane, we have a Song of the Siren being popped up. They just pop his ultimate going through as well. EMP. And there goes the Venomancer. That is the target that they wanted. Evoker still landing an EMP, but that's not going to do that much anymore. They kill off the Venomancer, which is what they came for. In the meantime, on the top lane, we have a Jungle not looking to Omni Slash. Maybe there's Enigma, but there's too many creeps around as well. Nature's Prophet TPing in Black Hole being used on the Juggernaut. TA being here as well, blinking in. And where are you gonna go, Juggernaut? You're gonna go down, Cedoy picking up the kill. Tornado on Cedoy, but make sure he doesn't get hit by the uh, by the Illuminate from Luxor and Melt damage. Giving the Invoker a lot of trouble, but he'll be fine. Extra movement speed from Wex. Maybe. Nah, he's not gonna blink in. Nah, he's not. Tier 2 Tower still drops, so that is two lanes now, two lanes dead. On the tier, tower, tier on the towers, and then there's five heroes once again helping out. So maybe they don't really force the T fight as, as I thought they would, at least not the way I would anyway. But they're still making sure they're everywhere. Their movement is just so painful right now. We have a TA with a blink dagger that can be anywhere. Nature's Prophet can TP wherever he wants to, and I'm not sure why Naga Siren is everywhere in the map, but it feels like she has a TP. <laughs> But she is just, uh, she is just everywhere. And they're just, look, look, yeah. We see the Naga Siren. We see Nexus drawing a line over this, um, top lane. Just this way. 
I do the same thing because that's where they want to go. They want to go that way. I can draw pretty lines. But yeah, that is going to be uh, the target next. Do we see them moving there? The only one that's not doing that yet is the Templar Assassin. She's going to try to maybe make sure that all lanes are pushed out so that they don't really have that much of uh, resistance, at least not for the first tower. And if they do, then they, she will make sure that the Crypt will do some damage to the tier 3, so that's her goal. But she is going to make her way towards that top lane. And we do see already four heroes off in five there. Keeper of Light doing what he can with Illuminate still level 2, TP in for the Tide Hunter. Tide Hunter, who is level 6. Uh, but he's gonna get glimpsed back. <laughs> oh, I love the disruptor! He just TP'd in, and the moment they saw that, it's like, hey, Tide, bye, Tide. Just glimpsed him back to where he came from. There's one tower down. Tide on actually decided not to go back into the top lane. I do think that he maybe should, because it's looking pretty squishy for this tier 2, and this gold graph is just getting out of hand. It's just spiking, and the juggernaut, who is supposed to be carrying his team, is not really going to be able to do that at this rate. He needs to have some freedom to farm. That is that is why he's normally not picked that often, because he doesn't really have a very solid escape without his TP and blade. Uh, Blade Dazu glimpsed back into a kinetic field, Invoker landing a tornado EMP, making sure they regret putting him back, but they're still gonna try to put, it, put him down, and they will be able to do so. Nature's Prophet unstoppable right now. And they just continue going to the tier 3 tower. No mercy whatsoever. M5. Gale going through Nexus, but he doesn't care. If it's getting uh, too hot on his speed, he can always just sing, and then uh, everybody backs off. But it's just half the damage of the tower done. Free. No kills. Well, they, they are, well, a kill on the invoker, so free and the invoker to boot. BKB up on Enigma, so he can cast his black hole uninterrupted. We saw this Naga Siren already having her uh, vanguard. And normally we see Naga Sirens going for that build with, uh, you know, with the Radiance or something like that. But having a vanguard kind of indicates that she's going to be way more involved now than uh, normally, than we would normally see. Normally we'd see that Naga Sirens is farming constantly, but as we see now, she is with her team, she is uh, ready to fight, and she's going to make sure that she is a utility hero that doesn't die with her song, with her Riptide, with her Ensnare, and her images, everything. And of course, images are kind of nice against the ju Juggernaut, because when Juggernaut ulties, he jumps off on the illusions as well, so a good one to have against Juggernaut, and of course we have to take into account that Juggernaut was picked after the Naga Siren. Tide died. I missed Tide dying, apparently, two mi minutes ago. He died four times. He's quite sad, Tide. Then again, no Ravage yet done. That is what they still are hoping for, but then again, if you do a Ravage now, you can't really, uh, you can't really do anything with it. You don't have the damage to go through. You'll c you'll get killed off. There's just too much on this radiant side to deal with right now. BKB being built on the TA, making sure that if uh, if there is a venomous there, she is at least able to not get that refraction popped off when uh, when all the damage goes through of the poison ticks and stuff like that. So good Anna for for her to have. Normally we see her going for Desolate or something like that, but with the Venomans on the opponent team, the BKB now is uh, is a lot more useful than anything else. So good ch choice there. And I am just going to check out more items. We see uh, Major's Prophet who just picked up a Maelstrom, and he is taking that semi care roll as well. I mean, he's 7 for 1. He's got 7 out of 14 kills. He's got half of the kills. So he is doing pretty good. So he has the goal to uh, to go for that semi care cell and still has a mechanism to support his team. And we see the Disruptor who doesn't really need to buy a mechanism anymore because, of course, his uh, teammate now has it. Has got mana boost, has got an urn to uh, still heal some of his teammates if uh, he does get some some uh, charges up on there, which he doesn't at the moment. But uh, nice uh, nonetheless. And that is everybody off the Radiant side. Let's check out where the Dire side see who's having what. And I have to say, I don't think they have that much. I mean, they don't have any towers down, which is where supports normally get their gold from. So we don't really have anything up on this tide here. Juggernaut, who did have a nice farm, he's got his face boots, but or at least he had a nice laning face, I put it that way. But after that, he couldn't really do that much anymore. He got forced back into his own uh, base for a long time. He's got uh, 86 lasted, but he died twice. So he doesn't have that much apart from the face boots that we indeed see. We have got the Venomancer that is building towards a 
mechanism as well, which they definitely need because there's a lot of team fight from the opponent team that they have to live through. And uh, so far, they have not really been able to do that just yet. So good, uh, good call there. Keep up the light. Picked up tranquility boots, tranquil boots, sorry. And uh, otherwise, 700 gold is uh, doing the warning job here. BKB up on the TA now here completed, and it looks like M5 is getting ready for a mid push. They have got all the towers on the map now, as in the tier ones, the tier twos, and getting ready to go in for the tier threes. And, and I don't think KP is ready for that just yet. Last one on the dire side still is the Invoker, who has got his drums, who wants to have a four staff next, and. Uh, Hopefully for him, he's going to be able to uh, to get the farm for that, but it's looking pretty dangerous for him to farm out there. And that's why we see everybody off KP, just in the base, apart from this uh, Juggernaut who has to be out here. But also, I mean, yeah, they might be giving up their tier 1, but you might lose your tier 3 for it, and that wouldn't be really be worth it. They're counting on that uh, Keep of the Light to be able to push everything back, Tornado EMP as well. But they just go for the tower, they don't care about that. Mechanism being used, Ravage, blink in, hello Tide, well not blink in, coming from the side. But will be enough. Black hole. Song being used. Black hole can oh, sorry, song being cancelled. Catches four of the black hole. Kinetic field catches two Venomancer using an ultimate and gonna be trying to get away still. We see Keeper of the Light dropping Nature's Prophet buying back and Nigma buying back. They are on their way here. Age is being popped up here. The TA blinking out of there into safety, and I have to say they at least got two kills. Two for two here on the middle lane. And I was not expecting that. As in they got the Nature's Prophet and the Enigma, two kills that, are, that they should not be too uh, sad about. But of course the tier 1 tower is still standing in the mid lane for the Radiant side. So they are able to get back here very fast. Of course Nature's Prophet can just TP here if he wants to, which he has at level 4. But uh, tier 3 tower is still standing. Mana League being used here on the Nature's Prophet, but he doesn't really matter. He, mind, he's just going to stand there and continue to farm. Gosh, landing on the Nature's Prophet. Kinetic Field hits on 2, there goes the Tide already! There goes the Nature's Prophet as well by the Juggernaut using his Omni Slash for that one. Nature's Prophet <laughs> kill it again after buying back already. Keeper of Light picking up the TA and they're chasing down on Naga Siren. They're ready for more. There is the Mana Leak. Kinetic Field will try to hold them back. Will be enough though. I don't think so. This Invoker is just super fast. Riptide being used, but Invoker still picks up the kill and it is four dead on the side of the Radiant. And the only one left alive is this guy on the Raptor who is uh, invisible right now and is going to be heading home because it's, it's not safe for him out there anymore. I think you should be heading towards home, maybe, slightly. That is uh, four dead with Nature's Prophet and Enigma buying back and I have to say I am impressed. I did not think they could do that and I, I'm gonna, well, Goldcraft is not dipping back just now. There we go. That is the one we're talking about. It was 12k in favor and then BAM! Back to 8k. They killed off heroes that are higher level than themselves, so they get a lot of experience for that one. And we just check out the levels for a second. Venomans and Invoker are level 13, which is the highest two of the Dire side. But tied onto level 7, we did see him drop very fast, I have to say. Uh, but they killed off heroes that were indeed higher level than themselves, were more farmed than themselves, and they just almost had a team wipe. And I'm gonna go back to the net worth. In the meantime, Nature's Prophet managed to get, pick up a kill on the Tide Tide, who is now level 8, but yeah, first of level 14, Nature's Prophet, but Keeper of the Light, Illuminate, and that will be a kill! The Invoker picking it up, and that's not worth, that's not worth killing a Tide for. KP, they're not done yet with this game. They are not done yet with this game. They will fight till the bitter end, even though there is such a head start now for M5. They will continue to fight, and now got again the Nature's Prophet, who died three times in the last two, three minutes or so, and that is painful. That is just painful. The Enigma is gonna push something on the bottom lane, but that doesn't matter that much. They'll just have their Venomancer and their Tidehunter and their Cuddle here to defend that Juggernaut in the meantime level 12, building towards his Battle Fury. And I mean, this is KP fighting, and they're they, they are ready for it. They only need one more game to take this best out of three series. While well, in 5 they're fighting for their lives, because they are trying to force out a game number three. They are already a game behind, and they can't afford to lose this game. They have to play it very, very... Well, I say safe, but that's not really the word I want to use. Very good, I should say. Oh, TA, where's your BKB? Where's your TP? There you go. Good boy. Omni Slash! Oh, Omni Slash! Juggernaut picks up the TA! Nice! And he's all oh, raised by back. And she doesn't have any gold left right now. 
And one thing that I have to do, well, sorry, Titans are still dropping here in this middle lane, it's probably picking up the kill. <laughs> and one thing that I have to point out here, if KP starts, you know, taking these kills back, and we do see the kill score going a bit even again with all these pickups, all these, uh, yeah, all these pickups, kills that they just randomly find and then are able to take, they might be taking the towers at some point in return as well, and take a kill and then get a tower in return, and that will drop this gold graph back to zero very fast because there's a lot of gold up for grabs for the Dio team that is. It's the TA that picks up the ages, so well maybe you can consider that uh, worth buying back for but I'm not sure. Could have done the Roshan after uh, after she came back alive, but nope. Had to buy back. Had to do it. Diffusal blade up on the Naga Siren. We also have an Itch Prophet building towards a uh, MKB with his uh, Demon's Edge. Oh, um, Mjolnir, even maybe. Actually, that's probably better. Uh, tower is gonna go down here, I think. Yeah, they're not gonna do that much against it. Ravage is back off cool though, but the BKBs! Look at those BKBs! They're just gonna stand there and hit on the tower. They're gonna get slowed by the Gale Steel. BKBs are now off. Gosh, go! Silencer, it gets Clean's back. Yeah. I was gonna say, that is the uh, most obvious, I wanna ravage, I wanna ravage, I wanna ravage, I wanna ravage Tidehunter ever. But Tidehunter doesn't have enough gold to buy a blink dagger, otherwise that could have been a fight again in favor of KP. We still have of course the Song of the Siren that can do something against it after the Ravage has hit. So if Naga Siren are looking for an opening, they have not got a vision up on this high ground, actually they do, they do. So if if she sees them in a position where she can sing and there's gonna be a good black hole possibility, she will. She shall. She's thinking about it. Illusions in the meantime, chipping damage away from this barracks. This juggernaut. Juggernaut is farming on the top lane. That's actually just killed off the tower. That is one tower down. The first tower down on the side of M5. They're gonna group up. If I was a dire side and I would have a black hole. This would have been my opportunity. Radiance top tower. That's what I, I, I think. If, if people are smoked up Radiance like that, I think, oh, black hole or a smoke. But it's neither. They're just uh, discussing their options and then went back to pushing, leaving the juggernaut to push the tier two as they just walk in there. Tornado EMP is gonna hit. Deafening blast as well. But there's the BKB again. Enigma just going for those barracks will be enough though. Song. Kinetic field over the evoker. Black hole will be cast. It hits on two. No rabbits for you. Tight, tight goes down. Templar, sorry, Templar has the kills out of the Venomancer. Venomancer by his back, though. Barracks is still alive. We see Stellan there. Gonna go for this Invoker. Invoker who uh, gets help from this blinding light from the Coddle. As we see another Kinetic Field hits on two. Juggernaut in a lot of trouble here. Has to back off from this the Templar Assassin. Mechanism will help him out. Here comes the uh, Nature's Prophet helping out as well. But Nature's uh, Juggernaut is gonna be able to stay alive. TA drops here on the side. And we'll be back up again. Let's see if they can be able to get him as well. Mana Leak. Cold snap, horses, and that is a dead TA! Undefended. With Naga Siren on her way out, Undefended. the barracks still stand. And I have to say, KP, I applaud you for holding back that incredibly scary combination of song, kinetic field, static storm, and black hole without a ravage. Because they did that. Tide Hunter got dropped. Venomancer got dropped and back, but they did that all without a Tide Hunter. Of course, which is actually kind of sad for Tidehunter because that would have been a good opportunity for him to get some levels up. Because he is going to send. There goes the tower. Like I said, when this starts happening, when they can start taking towers in return for their kills, they will get this gold graph back towards the zero line. Maybe not as much, but at least maybe 7.5k. That's what uh, what I'm expecting anyway. Gold of experience graph will be a bit more clear on this matter, though. They will see a better drop and will see even a more drop. Uh, after this time, they smoke up. They're instantly looking for more. In the meantime, though, tier one tower bottom lane also goes down. Juggernaut being the one to uh, to help out. Oh, there he is. And he has his battle fury. He has his Yasha and a TP in there from Colo, making sure that he can defend this lane. Gonna land a illuminate and gonna force out more TPs here from M5, or at least M5 is gonna force out TPs that is towards his middle lane because they really want this barracks. And they know it's regenerating, and they know they don't want to lose anything of the damage that they already did, so they're just going to continue going. Tornado EMP going through, killing off some of the illusions and forcing them back as well. Mana leak upon the TA who has the sound, still still has some mana there. Getting harassed, your refraction is already off there as well. Only got 18 mana left. 
The Juggernaut in the meantime on the bottom lane, tier 2 tower has dropped as well. Gold Graph is slowly but steadily going down. And F5 has to back off now. Bottom tower They're not getting these barracks for now and... If Juggernaut would have, uh, if they would have continued pushing, then Juggernaut would have continued pushing here as well. But Juggernaut now on his way back. TA is gonna try to find him. Oh, TP out, clever. Yeah, he's out. He does have a ward here, obviously. So he saw her coming. Not yet complete for the Nature's Prophet. His um. That one, that one, Maelstrom. I think he still wants it though. I mean, he still he might go for an MKB still, but I think he kind of wants his Maelstrom. We'll see. He has the money to buy a Hyperstone if he really wants to though. Now, Sentry Ward being placed just in case those pushes are gonna continue. If there's gonna be a smoke here, I mean, at some point maybe if M5 gets gets you know panic, it, it starts panicking. They might try to smoke up, run here, and then just brute force down these barracks, and this uh, this sentry work will be able to pick them out. As well as these. No smoke ganks, I say to thee. <laughs> you wanna go for this? Cold snap. Mana leak as well. Popstar BKB is gonna be able to run out. Popstar haste room. Yeah, that's, that will help. That will help indeed in uh, Enigma. Four staffs. Oh. <laughs> Definitely blast up on the Enigma. I have to say, I mean, this tide, we, we already know that he's kind of sad and he is building towards the blink. He's got 1400 gold. Uh, but right now, you got to help by his teammates. Four staff from the Keeper of Light as well as the four staff from Invoker, keeping him alive, making sure that the Enigma couldn't pick him off. Your prophet's still farming. And he has to fulfill that semi care role. Naga Siren also still farming, 30k. Thir well, uh, 3k. <laughs> 30k would be a bit much. Templar Assassin has a BKB. I wonder what she's gonna go for next. Maybe still Desolator, but maybe she rather wants uh, some uh, more uh, solid damage. I'm not sure. Desolator is, of course, quite solid damage. We'll see, though. Nick can't really farm because he has to leave the farm for his uh, teammates right now. Naga Siren needs to farm. He's got 3,300 gold. Either building towards a BKB or maybe still a Radiance. And uh, she's going to be in some trouble maybe. Four staff, Tornado, EMP going up and Ravage and they want to get her and... Oh, whoa! I'm not sure if that was worth using and the Ravage and the only slash four. But they think it's worth it. They think it's definitely worth it. Venomancer is going to push back the lane in the middle lane. Replacing wards and the push is uh, starting from uh, from this team right here. 1700 gold up on the tide. I really hope for him that he's not going to die because he really, really wants that blink dagger, I think. MKB. MKB on the Nature's Prophet as, as the next item. So that will indeed be uh, his item. And no continued push from uh, the dire side. No surprise, they we're kind of missing some heroes on the map. You can't really want to walk. You don't really want to walk into a trap at this stage of the game. You might lose your barracks. You know that. And I have to say, there was a fifth. There is a 15k in favor of M5, but it doesn't feel like that anymore. It does not feel like that anymore. In Tornado EMP BKB for the Enigma, and there's a four stop back from the oh from the Invoker or. A glimpse. Yeah, it was a glimpse back, rather. Don't mess with my invoker. But they did force out the BKB of the uh, of the Enigma, and he only has uh, once to go before it's down to five seconds. And that's not really that long of a time. <laughs> TA already is down to five seconds, even. Oh, Tide! So close! So close! He's gonna be so happy. He's gonna be able to throw out some good ravages. I hope so for him anyway. And um, Yasha being built on Naga Siren. And I did say Radiance, and uh, or at least uh, as a suggestion, but actually a Mass Style is uh, what I said earlier as well. It's just very good against a, um, a Juggernaut. You already have your mirror images, but more images mean more split damage with the Omni Slash. So you can just uh, get a, a Mass Style to help out if you do get ganked like you just did. 
and then a man style might be able to uh, to keep you alive long enough. But we will uh, we will see if it works. I oh hello, oh, that was an illusion. I mean M5 so so much ahead, and I'm I'm starting to wonder. Could they have done it differently and already had ended the game by now? Because right now they're just they're just waiting. And so far, the last couple of pushes that they had done, they didn't do it successfully. Roshan back up again. That might change uh, change things. But could they have continued pushing on one of the lanes and then gone for the GG at some point? Oh, top lane TA is no more mana for you. Well, sick charges will help there, but they have no dust. Where's the tornado? Where is the tornado? Tornado is on cooldown. They know that she's still there though. Deafening blast, that will help. Well, only for a short period of time. In the meantime, Roshan, Ravage, and Glimpse back. <laughs> Metamus Ozzy, and there's the song. And it's gonna be Nature Prophet that has to really back off here. He is down to 1 HP, and uh, he is uh, gonna be, uh, well. Enigma is gonna be Omni Slash. He buys back though, he wants to go for the side entry. He's gonna continue on his uh, crusade for Roshan. I have to say that. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up! Immortality. Juggernaut, I was gonna say. <laughs> Tidehunter! Did he have a blink? No. He has got money for a blink now, though. But he just ran in, ran in, ravaged, and then got glimpsed back, and then everybody of the Radiant was just standing there, sun for a second, but there was nobody to come in for it. Slightly, slightly trigger happy tide, but it was kind of funny to see. Anyway, that was a. Yeah, meh. Was really a fight, not really a fight. Enigma died, which basically the only one that died to, to due to the Omni Slash. Uh, but they do get uh, Roshan in return for it, and of course we, the Venomous Ultimate made sure that they had to back off. This Nature's Prophet was down to one HP because, of, you know, luckily for him that the Poison Nova is not lethal, but he, he couldn't stand there anymore. He had to be back, and they they had to give up Roshan. So this Juggernaut, I. Uh, I like Comax. I just have to say that. If they're gonna be able to, to live through it, I'm not sure. But I do like that they have hold on so long while the start. Look at this deep line. I sorry, I keep pointing it out. Experience graph will show it a bit more clear. We're moving towards that zero line. We see the juggernaut being very high up there on that worth, just like the nature's prophet who is very even more higher up there than because uh, it's top four, it is still gonna be top four in favor of them five with three people there from them. And only one from uh from the Radiant team, uh, from the Dire team, please. Distracted. So as semi carries, they, they KP is really building on that Juggernaut. Semi carry of the Invoker is not really there in this case. Uh, Venomancer, <laughs> not sure if you can call him a semi carry. Did pick up a Eganim Scepter. We, we saw doing work earlier. Oh, DA. Can you go invisible again? Yes, you can. Anchor Smash. But there's no Invoker. To send through. Oh, Manali. Not still. Now we start. There we go. Omni Slash! Boom! Mysteries. And that was uh, the blinding light helping out. Because nothing can keep get you out of melt, no sun. Apart from if, you, if you're forced to move. So, definitely blast, blinding light, you are out of melt. And that is uh, what was the case in uh, on the top lane there, and TA dies again. And really, could I have continued pushing early on at 25 minutes in? I think they could have. I think they could have. But this second game of this best out of three for the third place decided for Lost World, just throwing it in there just in case you forgot about that, is uh, looking more and more like KP still has quite a big chance. I, 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 well, I got told you always have a chance in Dota. You always have a chance. But the chance was quite quite, quite small at the start of this game. Or 20 minutes in or so. 15 minutes in even. But it's starting to get bigger and bigger. That's what she said. Uh, anyway. Experience graphs were zero gold graph. I mean if you're keeping even you're, you're, you're staying ahead. So that's, that's what they're doing. And we do see M5 slightly at a bit of a loss. I mean, they have to continue farming, but what good is their farm if they're not able to take fights anymore? I mean, this semi carry Venomancer, so even though he's not got that much now worth, but he is pretty painful with this poison open. Of course, there is already one PKV up on the TA. But they do need more. 
They need more BKBs. That is what they need. Enigma already had a BKB also. But what did Ty Blink? Oh, he didn't buy a Blink. He didn't go for Blink. Didn't want a Blink. Okay. Picked up a Cloak as well of an Overclock. Maybe go for BKB instead. Maybe thinking that the, the Blink is not needed. Because they don't want to initiate that way anyway. They want to just make good use of M5 and the way they play. Oh. <laughs> Puffer's BKB. TP out will be enough. Yeah, I think so. This time he will be out. I have to say though, he is being in those locations, in those positions, I should say, a hell of a lot. That is, uh, of what is enabling KP to kill him off or to force, to harass him so much, to force him back to his base. And, I mean, he's there again. Blink dagger off on Enigma, so that will maybe enable him for some better black holes, not le relying on the song to set that up. And actually they go back out, knowing that they couldn't do anything at this time. I mean, they don't have the illumin the, the store spirit anymore, the spirit form rather, uh, for that blinding light. So I said something about BKBs, I think he heard me. He has a BKB. BKB upon the Nature's Prophet. More BKBs, please. And it's only the Naga Siren and the Disruptor that don't have a BKB up on the Radiant side. And that's basically everything you need to do against uh, against the Venomancer as well as the Tide Hunter. And of course, Juggernaut is still gonna 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 hurt you with his right clicks and with his butterfly. <laughs> still, still at 30k gold, 30 hundred gold, 30, 3k gold. Jeez, English, 3k gold. Still quite uh, quite rich. But still, and we see we have a bit of a stalemate. Is there someone there? Or are they gonna smoke? They smoked. And I was saying a stalemate, but this is looking like smoke versus smoke. Yes, and five also smoke. They're gonna run into each other. Here they are. First one gets glimpsed back. Actually, the glimpse get cancelled by the song, but that doesn't matter. There's a black hole. There's the static storm. Will it be now? Venomancer only still goes through. The Juggernaut is dead, but he had an agent, so he'll back up again. Deafening blast going through. Nice first up from the Juggernaut. Omni slash going through. Naga Siren is already dead. Tide Hunter also died as well. And not a lot of force stuff, but this time he doesn't make it out. Nature's Prophet is gonna try to make it out here. He should be fine or not. Or not. No! Where did he go? Oh, he got glimpsed back. <laughs> was that a glimpse? How did he get there? Oh, that was confusing. Uh, TA is gonna. <laughs> TP back home, should be fine. Uh, but that fight, again! Going towards Favor of the Dire, I think I'll call it that. I mean, yes, they killed off the Invoker, yes, they got the Ages. But that is not really worth losing an Aga Siren for, or an Enigma, for that matter. And the TA wasn't even in that fight. TA who actually picked up in Lincoln Sphere. Oh, useful. The mana leak was really hurting her that, so she knows that that's uh, indeed something she has to walk, run out, uh, well, watch out for. And uh, yeah, useful. Her mana pool is not that big, so mana leak is really hurting her. And we've seen her being stunned by that before, like tons of times. Nice sentry ward placage for that TA. She was able to CP out anyway with her BKB on. They just profit, go for a sheepstick. Need to do something against this guy here. This guy who picked up a basher. And bashers are painful. And bashers don't care about your BKB. They don't care if you're TPing out with your BKB. They will stun you anyway so that your TP gets cancelled. Okay. Nice kinetic field. Thank you, Disruptor. Thank you, Trade. You picked up a, a gem of true side? Counter warden that stuff. He has some uh, something to learn still though. Ooh, that is a wrong one. That is, that is a fake one. It's the real one in there. Real ones. Uh, the fake ones are chasing down, finding out everybody here. Oh, oh wow! Hello, illusions. <laughs> Keeper of the light. You you better start up healing again because that was like half your health with just from Riptide and a couple of illusions hits. But you know, Radiant pick up. Oh uh, well, Franco boots will help with that.
This is the real one as well, and they find her. She will be able to blink away. I picked up a ogre, so I actually blink away. No. Ravage being used to stop her from TPing. BKB was still off cooldown. She could have popped that. But rather than that, they even used the Omni Slash on that. I don't think that was needed, but they pick up a kill on the TA again. TA has died six times now, and I think most of her kills were in the last 20 minutes or so. 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Level 25 on this um, Juggernaut. Let's check out the levels for a second. Level 22 is the highest up there. Oh, Tornado, EMP. And someone got... <laughs> So we got Glimpse back again. Look at that damage! Basher doesn't care if you're TPing! I said that! Listen! Try running! But then again, you have face boost. This juggernaut is really, really, pretty painful. And then getting electricity as well. Hello, Vite Tower. And that is, uh, that is KP, just showing what a juggernaut can do. Song. Oh, there will be a black hole also. Here they come. BKB gets popped. Black Hole catches two, no Ravage for you, even though it's still on cooldown, but still gets interrupted. Juggernaut goes down though, no Omni Slash just yet, but that doesn't matter, look at that damage! And it will it be enough? Oh, he still has, doesn't have an Aegis, still managed to kill off the Naga Siren, but four dead, Naga Siren actually buys back, and there was actually a team wipe in favor of the die with only the J Tidehunter and the Juggernaut dying, but Juggernaut buys back, Juggernaut's already back here again because he got summoned back by the Keeper of the Light. And able to just go on these barracks like there's no tomorrow and they can go onto the bottom lane if they really want to. Leaving the... Well, leaving the other barracks to uh, go down to the wards here, but I don't think they will get it anymore. Or can they? Nah, they can't. So they won't get both of the barracks, but they got the Melly barracks. <laughs> I have... I, every time again, I mean, sometimes you have those kind of games that just surprise you and this is one of those games. Okay, there it is. That is experience. That looks a bit more clear. The like, goal oh, is a bit. It's still in favor of the dive, but uh, in the radiant, but you don't see that. You really don't see that. Uh, someone got glimpsed glimpse back. Was it? No, nobody glimpsed. Why did I? Why did I think of glimpsed all over the place? But nope. And this time, Age is up again on the juggernaut. Forty-one hundred gold. So he has to wait with buying something until I was gonna say until he's actually got his. Uh, Age is gone, but he actually just bought an abl abyssal blade, you know, because he wants to stun stuff. I don't blame him, stunning stuff is nice. Chip of Truth that is now on the, on the Enigma, because the Disruptor obviously lost that. Tied on to 1900 gold. Picks up a smoke. And I have to say, normally you see Tidehunter's Ravages and being game changing and stuff like that, but that is actually not the case at all. It is the Juggernaut that is game changing. Keep of Light helping out with this, uh, at least to making sure that they don't get pushed. And this Invoker throwing out some, some Night. I have to say, I'm, I'm quite impressed. Like, four staff and then definitely last still wave. Even if he is in the kinetic field, he's still able to have such an impact on the game. I mean, silence doesn't matter him. Because he was just four staff out of the silence and then just deafening blast and making sure that nobody does anything to his teammates. Tornado EMP go through. He's playing a good game, that's just my point. And it's not all the juggernaut. Not all indeed. In the meantime, top lane, Omni Slash. <laughs> I don't know if the Omni Slash is just buying him some time. And there's a deafening blast going through. Enigma going down. There's a song helping out. BKB's on the radiant side. Venomancer, though, he can just be in there. He wants to go for the TA. TA, where are you going to go? You're not gonna go anywhere, you gotta go down! Within. And that is two down for zero, and that was a gank, and a GG cause hold! Solo does not want to fight against it anymore, it will be KP who will be victorious in his best out of three. I have to say, I'm quite disappointed that they were not gonna see more of these fights, but they just know that they can't fight against us anymore. Disconnects are there, and five taking a loss in a best out of three against KP, which will mean that KP will be the third place team of the team that is placed third for the last world tournament it will be the team that will be receiving hundred dollars which is the prize for the third place in this tournament and will be um, third place under either Virtus Pro, well both Virtus Pro and Empire which are the teams that we uh, still have to see in the grand finals best out of five which will be tomorrow and tomorrow um, at 1700, so 5 p.m. CEST time. So don't miss that. I'll be casting that as well. Thank you for watching. My name is Shiva. Hope you uh, will subscribe to my YouTube as we're trying to get 5,000 subscriptions. 
which is uh, proven to be quite a lot more than I have at the moment. Anyway, I'm also going to put up uh, this. Uh, don't go anywhere, though, because we'll have more Dota 2 action coming up. We'll have the 4PL Cup coming up. 4PL Cup is a two-weekly cup with uh, teams such as... Uh, I think the retry is in there today, and No Pants Party, which we saw yesterday, taking it up against a Bulba slash Flux and stuff stack, and actually won. Sorry for the spoiler. Uh, but uh, yeah, don't go anywhere. We'll have more Dota 2 action coming up. Uh, for now, this was the Laurel's World Tournament. More Lost World coming up tomorrow at 1700 CDST time, or otherwise known as 5 p.m. of Virtus Pro versus Empire. And uh, yeah. Go tune in for that tomorrow, and stay tuned for 4PL now. Don't go anywhere.